Hello everybody, my name is Petr Koutny and today let's speak about two bishops. About bishop pair, how they are great, how they are strong, where they are strongest and how to play positions if we got this advantage. Let's speak about game Salo Flor and Michal Botvinnik, uh, year 1933 and uh, white, Czech, Grandmaster Salo Flor will beat great Michal Botvinnik. Why? Because this game till now it's interesting because white got two bishops against two knights say maybe knight and bishop but maybe let's speak about this position you can see that um, white's army is a bad army doing nothing yes uh, right now black's got two knights in the game and maybe he is more active uh, yes but White's got two bishops, and I will tell you that two bishops are the strongest pieces in nearly every endgame. Why? Because if you are playing endgame, just imagine endgame. In endgames, there are nearly every time open position, nearly every time, and uh, bishops should be monsters. Yes, now it's important to not allow Black's knight to be active, and just take every piece where Black knight should go. F3 is a great move. You know, Saloflor is taking care at the first about of knight of f6. This knight has forbidden squares on g4, e4 and d5 and step by step, move by move, uh, white will be happy. Of course, for white now is the most important plan to bring his pieces in the game. Another plan, if I told you that nearly every endgame favored white because white's got two bishops advantage, so nearly every exchange is okay for white. That's the plan. The last plan for the white, don't hurry. Play slowly chess because you got advantage. Don't play a risky chess. Don't play messy position. Simply position, simply chess two bishops. That's the right plan for these positions. Okay, maybe e5, why not? And bishop to e3, knight to e2. The plan is to go knight to c3 and knight to d5. Don't worry about any exchange. Every exchange favored white. And let's play this position. Knight to c3 and bishop to e2, a6. Okay, rook to c1 and queen to d2. Looks like c4 pawn is for free. But uh, no, if play would take, it's losing because of this pin. This pin is a losing pin to black and of course a winning pin for white. So don't worry, Michal Botvinnik played queen to b8. But every exchange favored white. Knight to d5, one exchange. Another exchange on c1. And maybe for the first look looks like black will go root to c8 and he will enjoy open c file. But not forever. Uh, short castle and rook to c1. At the end we are there. Without any difficulties you can see that white is happy to go to endgame. Two bishops, again two knights. And knight on f6 is a bad knight because it's very difficult to find job for him. Okay, now let's take care about another knight. But another, the most important plan for endgame is to play with all our um, army. So the last and worst is this piece and should go somewhere here, of course, somewhere. So this is really important and don't forget to play with this piece. So F2, E7, Bishop to e3 and the first step is gone, is done. Knight on d7 has another problem. Okay, maybe b6 pawn, b6 square is a forbidden for this knight. And step by step, move by move, as I told you, uh, why is taking care about knight. Yes, it's nice how white is not hurry before. And you know, I will give you another another advice. If you have chance or choose to play active or not active move, nearly every time is believe in active moves. Here, Michal Potvinnik played in knight to d7 and this move is not the best move in the position. Maybe it's stronger knight to a4. Maybe because this is a 
more active than knight to d7. Okay, it's happened knight to d7. Still, we are watching position where white's got two bishops against two knights. And not now. Maybe one day knight will go h5, f4. Why to wait till tomorrow? Let's play g3 and another plan. Another reason why um, black has got this knight in this game is gone. And you know, careful game. Uh, knight to b6, of course, is a threat to be active on a4. Let's go there immediately. You know, this is a beautiful game where white doesn't want to give any chance, any chance to black. Okay, a4. So, these two knights are bad in this position because they don't have a good job. Yes, of course, two bishops are here, but you know, uh, this bishop is a strong piece and this is not bad okay but it's a time for his improvement it's not difficult to improve this bishop but step by step don't hurry now to b6 and a5 so one knight bad knight another knight another bad piece so that's a small victory for white of course it's still a long way to win this game but at least we know that we are fine okay another bishop to b2 maybe one day we are playing f4 it's good to show activity and to plan because black is really passive and black should only wait to our moves so don't hurry queen to e3 bishop to f1 uh, maybe we are going here, we are going here. At least uh, black's position is terrible hard to play. You know, two black passive knights, nothing to do. Uh, knight to b5, h4. Of course, we are not taking this knight because we know that we got two bishops. h4 and bishop to h3. So now we are happy. To get this strong uh, bishop one day maybe we are going bishop to c8 and we are taking these two pawns so that's the first threat uh, as i told you two bishops in open position two bishops in open game that's a fantastic weapon it's really good to know this game and play like salafor f4 let's open position f5 and bishop to f5 you know every pawn moves is making new weakness for black. G6 happened, and why not to wait? Bishop to C1, and maybe here is another weakness. So, you know, it's a funny that sometimes we are enjoying game of Michal Tal. Like Michal Tal is going only forward, and he's attacking and attacking and winning. And sometimes it's not boring to watch this end game where we are watching two bishops, and these two bishops are still strong pieces. And I believe this is exactly the chess beauty. You know, this is another chess beauty. Just play simply, slowly, and good chess, and just understand two bishops. Knight to g7 and one take and take okay another threat just to take on h6 maybe if black is playing g5 take take and i believe here that nearly white is winning yes of course one day white is going here that's the first winning plan another winning plan is if white managed to go to c8 is winning over here and the last winning plan is black is really passive uh, from the opening till now black didn't find the activity the right squares for his knights and um, this game he is not enjoying so let's come back and we are watching move h5 and bishop to e3 bishop to e h6 and g4 yes it's really important to open new lines new files and to be more active so g4 is okay and maybe h5 it's coming soon uh, still one knight is active but you know it's not too many squares to go there and there is nothing to attack um, all white pawns are in the right squares without any dangers so slowly game one more time and 
queen to d uh, to d3 f5 i think f5 is a mistake because that's exactly what is um, white looking for one exchange and here is a winning pawn maybe we are losing pawn here but uh, this pawn is not important anymore of course white is going to take care about b4 and a5 pawn and white's got a really simple and winning plan to go h5 h6 h7 h8 so maybe as i told you here is another winning plan and these two bishops are stronger and stronger you know less pawns bigger power for our bishops uh, less pawns more space for our bishops and bigger activity to our bishops so uh, bishop to g6 and of course uh, not hurry check and of course just to go nearly one day to h5 Yes, uh, I hope you understand that uh, knights are not stronger here and from the beginning till end uh, it was a terrible hard game to black. Yes, uh, knight to h5 and let's go there. Bishop to d2 and bishop to g4 of course as I told you another threat just take and bishop to f5 to d2 and black resign yes of course it was not the most exciting game ever but it was interesting that from the beginning till end only one winning plan was to get open bish uh, two bishops pair to end game it's enough i think that it's a good weapon it's a good technique belong to good chess player and maybe it's uh, advice to you believe in your bishop they are strong pieces and they are the best piece in nearly every endgame. As we saw here, a solo floor played really well and well done to Michal Botvinnik. Sometimes we are winning, sometimes we are losing. That's life, that's a chess. Okay, we are at the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you saw something interesting and you know that two bishops are strong pieces in nearly every endgame. So if we got two bishops advantage, it's good to us to exchange nearly everything, not bishops, and then to enter endgame. Thank you very much. We are at the end. So one more, one more big thank you for your attention, your likes and your follows. And I hope I will see you soon in our another YouTube chess video. Bye bye.